Good afternoon. My name is Don Malloy, and I am with Duloff and Filing Box. Today, I would like to speak with you about is a ransomware attack in your future, and how to prevent an attack. So, here's a table of contents. What we're going to talk about today. I'll give you a little bit about the company the problems that are going on with breaches, an introduction to anti-ransomware protection, storage protection, and we'll see a couple demos. So Dual Auth and Filing Box, they are a Korean companies. They are connected. Uh, Dual Auth does one-time password mutual authentication and Filing Box is anti-ransomware technology provider. So today, we have a whole bunch of breaches going on in the United States, as, as you well know, right? Most businesses take at least 228 days to detect a security breach and 80 days to respond and contain it. So prevention-based approaches, they are now inadequate. So detection and response is the future for effective security. Now let's look at cybercrime. It's a growing threat, right, globally. When I first started putting up the slide, I showed four companies on it. Apple, Google, Sony, and RSA. I said, what do these companies have in common? Well, at the time, RSA was the largest security company, Google the largest internet company, Sony the largest entertainment company, and Apple was the largest company by market share in the world. What did they have in common? They were all hacked. So look at this slide today. Of course, I could put another couple dozen companies up there that you all know the names of because everybody's getting hacked on a daily basis. And I'm sure one of the companies that has your data has gotten hacked. So how do these breaches happen? So an average of 4,800 websites a month are compromised, according to Symantec. A third of all data breaches in 2018 involve internal people. And 71% are financially motivated because they want the money. Ransomware accounts nearly a quarter of all the incidents where malware is used. And 95% of the breach records come from government, retail, and technology. 36% external data breach actors were involved in organized crime. So it's either state actors, organized crime, or just people wanting money. So looking at the average response time in the life cycle, healthcare and financial industries spent the most time in the data breach life cycle, 329 days and 233. That's almost a year, 329 days, where the bad guys are running amok in the systems. The data breach life cycle of a malicious or criminal attack took an average of 315 days. It's up from what I said earlier. And almost half of the malicious email attachments are on Microsoft Office files. And then from 2016 to 2018, most attack groups target an average of 55 organizations. So, and we know healthcare has got a big problem. It's the most ex expensive industry for a data breach at over $7 million. The global cost of a data breach is almost $4 million. And the average cost or loss of a record is $150 per record. A data breach life cycle under 200 days costs $1 million less than one that's over 200 days. And 40% of the costs incurred more than a year after the data breach. So in 2020, the country with the highest cost of a data breach, of course, was the United States at eight and a half million. So a mega breach of 50 million records has an average total cost of almost $400 million, a growth of 12%. Hospitals spend 64% more annually on advertising over the two years following the breach. So it's estimated that a business will fall victim to a ransomware attack every 11 seconds. Cybercrime is going to cost the world $10.5 trillion by 2025. Actually, I've just seen numbers recently. I think it's going to be 
higher than that just this year alone. Attackers will zero in on biometric hacking and expose vulnerabilities in touch ID sensors, facial recognition, and passcodes. So now these are projections. These are things that are going to happen. Skimming is not new, but the next frontier is going to be a national network of a major financial institution which will cause millions of dollars in losses. How about this one? A major wireless carrier will be attacked with a simultaneous effect on both iPhones and Androids, stealing personal information from millions of consumers and possibly disabling all wireless communications in the United States. This is experience. This is a projection. Think about that for a minute. A cloud vendor will suffer a breach, compromising the sensitive information from hundreds of Fortune 1000 companies. The online gaming community will be emerging hacker service with cyber criminals posing as gamers and gaining access to computers and the trusted data of trusting players. This is, these, some of these things are actually happening now. So since 2016, over 4,000 ransomware attacks have occurred daily in the United States. Ransomware attacks caused almost 50% of healthcare breaches in 2020. Over 4.2 million Americans have been victims of a mobile ransomware attack. While in operation, the hackers who attacked the Colonial Pipeline this past spring have earned over $90 million in Bitcoin. The value of a ransom demand has increased, exceeding over $1 million. And it's predicted that ransomware costs will exceed $20 billion in 2021. So some of the steps to prevent ransomware attacks include employee education training, very important. Avoiding suspicious links. This is the number one things that people do, phishing attacks, right? Phishing and farming. Creating stronger email protections. Improve password security with OTP and multi-factor authentication. And keeping backups of data and information. I'm gonna show you that that's not even good enough. As of 2020, ransomware attacks on the United States healthcare providers cost over $157 million in losses since 2016. The average cost of a ransomware attack in the higher education industry is almost half a million dollars. And 62% of all records leaked in 2019 were from financial institutions. So let's talk a little bit about storage protection. So typically today we have, you know, our email, we do internet surfing, we, we download files, we store things on a USB drive and pull it down. And uh, we, we, we use applications that's sitting on our OS, but also malware may be sitting on that OS and it may pull out the data breaches, right? And then our data storage, you know, we, we read and write our data and we encrypt it and everything. but it may be off to the side data encryption where they're storing and encrypting our information so you can't have access to it. So looking further with having a, a filing box in your system, you have the operating system and you may have still have the malware operating, sitting on your operating system. And then when your application goes to run inside that filing box mega box, the pre-registered applications are able to read and modify and create and delete the files, but an unknown application of which this malware will be, it will be able to read a fake file with only a read-only attribute. It will block it, so you cannot create, modify, or delete the file, therefore protecting you and all your data. So another way of looking at it, here's your host PC or your server and you have malware sitting on top of the OS. But over in the storage protection side, all your data is protected because it's separated in a read, write, read only, and fake only. So here's a little demo. Let's take a look and see what happens. It's the local disk versus the filing box. And we'd have the malware that's going to come and it's going to encrypt it. And we're gonna run this malware and see what happens to the data on the local disk. All of a sudden, all that data is encrypted versus everything on filing box is untouched. 
So here's another way with uh, the command prompt. You're trying to run, access is denied. And so you, you run it again and you're in. And you try to run this presentation, try to open it up. It won't open up. So if you have to have it as an allowed app, which you could make this in a setting. So now you want to look at this folder. So this is in the network storage. It's like a network storage folder. And then here it is. And you try to open it. It will not allow you to open that file. Protect it. OK. So then you say you try and copy the file. Let's copy and move it. No, can't do that either. Next, let's try and delete the file. All right, we'll delete the file. Sure. We think it's deleted. No, file's still there. It's not deleted either. But if you want to allow an app to have access to this, you can do this with Filing Box. Find it. Open it. And then now you want to run the Mega Filing Box Mega. And it's inside of it. And now you go to open it. It's going to want you to look for read write. And you say change your settings. Now you have to have administrative rights to do this. So you log in with your password, and now you have your OTP that you get through an authenticator. And you can, you can make this as difficult as, as possible. And now only you can have access to that file. You can open it. You can read it. You can change it. And there it is. So this protects you from all your files of being able to be touched. You can move it. No, but you can't open it because you didn't set it so that you could open it. So you have control over all your files. Put it back in there. Can't read or write it. So the company has certifications from, from FIDO and from Gartner, IBM Security. Uh, it's being used by the uh, President's House in, in Korea and the largest uh, uh, credit card processor in Korea. And we're just now coming into the United States. So if you have any questions, uh, please let me know. Here's my email address, my phone number. If you're interested, in a free month, six month trial, let me know and see if you qualify. We would love to have government, uh, healthcare, and, and schools. We'll, we'll guarantee we'll be able to get them free trials and maybe somebody else. So thank you very much for listening and please contact me for a free trial and, and let's move things along. Thanks.